a little bit of background with me. As I said, I, I'm a recent <coughs> graduate from Edge Hill University. Um, journey, st well, we're both recent graduates. Sorry, I, I keep putting her in the background. It's not, it's not <laughs> choice. She can talk. It's just that she just doesn't like to talk, so I shall be doing most of it. Um, recent graduates, really, we became graduates at Edge Hill University um, as a journey, really, that we, we went on through a past life that we were in. We've both got children with neurodevelopmental conditions, we've both got children with ADHD. Um, my child, who is now 22 years of age, was diagnosed with ADHD when he was seven and there was no support, no, no support for me. I was two years in getting a diagnosis, given a piece of paper and then left to go out and deal with the situation on my own. Uh, schools didn't know what to do, professionals didn't know much about ADHD in those days. Um, and I was involved um, in setting up a charity in Liverpool. It was a project that we got funding from the Children's Fund back in 2002 and set up a charity. Um, that went really well, except that it started to. The more people learned about ADHD, the more clinical it became. And as a, as a parent, working with other parents with children with ADHD, we realised that actually it wasn't so much the clinical model that we were, what we needed, but the social support. Because once you go to your GP and you go on down the process, the line, nobody's there at the end of the phone when you need some support, and there's nobody there to help you get through the daily the trials of ADHD. So um, my main role was around education in the, the charity that I worked in. But it kept going in a direction that I didn't want to go in. And as Isla says before, there's always one in the organisation who keeps trying to go in a direction that others don't actually feel comfortable <coughs> with. And what I felt was needed was that we needed to develop um, families to actually take control of their own children's needs themselves in their family, within their family, within their capabilities, but also within their community. Because there's nothing worse from a parent's perspective of being told that there's a problem with your child and you have to go there to get that child fixed because nobody can fix my child. My child is my child and no one can fix them, so I don't expect them to. I want the tools to be able to work with my child myself. And we found that over the years there's been more and more um, s services being developed that with a fix-it mentality that people go to and they expect people to fix their problems. Well, what we wanted to do was to actually help communities to develop the skills themselves. So with the help of, of Unlimited um, and our husbands and our partners and our friends, we borrowed quite a few, few pounds from them, um, hence the fact we're not going on holiday this year, but that's another issue, um, <laughs> to try and get together and actually set up um, a non-for-profit organisation in the heart of the community to train parents and, ch and, and carers of children with a range of neurodevelopmental conditions who really need the social support there in the heart of their community, not to go to Dr so-and-so on Wednesday there and this appointment in Alderhay then and a psychologist there, because to them, they're, they're, they're children and they don't need to be sort of in the system because they're, they're not normal, however normal is, is defined. So we've set this, this company up and we've actually set up two companies. So we've actually got a training and consultancy company because over the years we've all trained ourselves up as parents in a variety of ways around variety of needs um, and now we want to give, give that back as a, as a team of associates. So we've got um, one of our colleagues is, is a um, secondary maths teacher, but she's also got two children with Asperger's, and she's also um, an ASD specialist. So she's come on board with us. Um, so we've got, the, the, there's a couple of partners in the organisation, but we've got a team of associates who dip in and out as and when the skills are required. Now most of these people worked within local authorities, but have been finished up, and so they're now need, in need of keeping their skills updated. So we just call on them as and well we need them. And one of the things that, that we do is we, we use the, um, the training consultancy to earn some money while we train professionals and we train people, train schools, um, to, to earn a living, enough for us to be able to volunteer our time to develop the social community groups that we have. Now our target was 
that by March that we would have one group running and that by September we'd have two groups running and by next March we'd have three well by the first of March this year we had three and the problem is is that we're getting more and more people wanting us to do what we're doing in their community but we don't have the capacity to do that none of us have been paid in the last 12 months so we're doing this purely for the love of it which is it will be nice to get a penny in the bank now and again um, and so we you know we need to earn enough money to be able to go out and actually develop these groups and, and we have um, values of engaging and in encouraging educating equipping and empowering the families to be able to cope with the daily struggles that they face and not have the I need someone to fix it mentality it's the, the can do I can do this if you help me to do it so we're using our skills and our expertise that we've gained over the years to train the, the families in how to manage about SEN difficulties about if your child is excluded from school if you go in to a meeting and you don't understand that we can help you to go and, and deal with that situation so they gain the skills so they actually don't need us as much and the idea is that within the next couple of years we'll be able to have trained up um, a cohort within each community that you can go to within your community that's just like going to the active aging program in the community centre you can go there and you can get training on dyslexia or dyspraxia or Asperger's or Fragile X or whatever because we don't see our children's disabilities as a problem it's society that sees us as a problem so what we're saying is let's let's normalize it by having advice and support in the heart of your community and not seen as being you know excluded by having to go somewhere else to get the support that you need because obviously often it's not what you need what you need is you know is somebody you can pick up the phone to or somebody who's been through it before and says actually that's the way they but we've done it this way and actually we've come to the same conclusion that this is the best way to do it so they can pick and mix what need what support they need but at the heart of their own community so i'm just going to hand you over now to vanda if i've got sorry i talk too much um, and she's going to tell you a little bit about what how she um how she got to where she is now and and about what she does in a community group um i originally met Risa about eight years ago and i too have a child with adhd and um, um i first met her on one of these um on, on like a support program <coughs> and from the day i met her it was a very mentoring experience um, because she'd gone through everything that I needed to um, to know about, um, then she shared her experience with me. So that's the ethos that we've based this whole organisation on. It's it's about sharing your experience. It's not about us being teachers and teaching these people something that they need to know. It's about sharing experiences and sharing strategies and sharing solutions and making it a very non-judgmental experience because. Families who have children with these uh, conditions, who have challenging conditions and additional behavioural issues, um, feel very isolated, socially isolated. So it's about sharing those experiences and, and making it very, as I said, very non-judgmental. So my experience has been a very, very positive one. Um, and um, I was encouraged to um, start you know, learning and, and then sharing my experiences with other parents. And that's how we've gone through. and. Um, my background um, is working for local authority um, in a teaching capacity and working in deprived communities um, and I've worked with some really inspiring people and to, to see where they won't go out the front door and to work with them and to build confidence and encouragement and, and share experiences with them so they become confident and in engaging at, um, activities and education and and then take it forward and beyond what you is so inspiring. So that's the reason why we want to do this particular type of work. We've also got another colleague who's an associate who's coming on board, who's actually just in her final year at Edge Hill University. And she came to me five years ago. Um, stereotypical, you know, single parent with three children um, and couldn't do it, no education, she said. We've now mentored her and supported her in this way to be able to go on because she's got a child with ADHD as well and she's now learning and her concern is that her child without the right support will go into, into enter the criminal justice system 
So she's in Edge Hill now and that's what she's doing. And now what she's going to do is bring her experience around ADHD and the criminal justice system and learning disabilities back into our organisation so that she can then share that with everybody. So this is, this is the idea, this is the passion and this is the belief in what we're going to do. So I hope that's okay and thank you for listening.